Welcome to the next session of Embedded Software Testing uh, Unit 3 series. Uh, this is the second session in this uh, Unit 3, and uh, we will uh, study about uh, the static uh, testing uh, aspects like uh, static analysis, code review, instructions, tools, etc. And uh, today we will uh, start on the data coupling or uh, data flow analysis. So before that, uh, we will just do a recap of uh, what we have uh, studied in the earlier session. We had a look into static testing, and uh, we know that it's a uh, component-based uh, testing without execution of the embedded software uh, program. We will do a evaluation of the system without the need of executing the program by analyzing uh, the various. Uh, Aspects of the embedded software system. In context with the dynamic testing, uh, the static testing is uh, against the execution uh, uh, not needed. So basically, for the completion of embedded software testing, we need to have both these type of techniques to be tested uh, as a complemented testing technique. For each other uh, completion, so the different types of uh, static testing is on static analysis, review, inspection, and test process. Then uh, we have testing metrics which are used in terms of reporting, tracking, and uh, making sure that uh, the testing is complete in all aspects. In uh, static analysis, uh, uh, we had uh, gone through. Uh, the type of analysis that we do, identify unreachable code, parameter type of mismatches, possible array bound violations, faults that are found by the compilers, it could be general info type warnings or any errors. So, this type of issues uh, which are going to be reported by the compilers are also analyzed statically, and uh, with the help of the code, we will uh, do the program complexity. As the complexity increases, the fault density, the fault density increases. We know that uh, we should limit the complexities to certain extent so that uh, the complexity of the program is controlled and within the limit. Also, we had uh, highlighted about uh, the advantages of the static analysis uh, when it can be done as soon as the code is done and compiled. It can be used as it is. We have the Understanding of the program and the requirements, and so on par with that, whether it is there or not. So we can do a uh, pre uh, preliminary sort of a uh, evaluation of the uh, developed code or the program. So that is why static analysis is effective when, as soon as the code is done, better to do it in the beginning than in the uh, end or the after. Uh, so dynamic testing is completed also we have a representation of uh, the control flow call tree sequence diagrams class diagrams depending on the embedded software system so that is also used for uh, analyzing the project or the program so that also will be part of static analysis static analysis so the main aspect is uh, one of the main aspect is control coupling and data coupling Data coupling the dependence of the software component on data not exclusively under the control of that software component it means the dependency of the uh, component on particular data is not getting controlled by the same component but getting used or shared between different components how the uh, data is being coupled between these components is what is being done in the data coupling and control coupling the manner or degree by which one software component influences the execution of another software component. So that is what the control coupling is about. The basically, we do an analysis of the, uh, the various paths of the program in terms of how the control is being uh, done in the entire life of the software program. Embedded software program is being analyzed. That is what we do with the control coupling. So these two are the definitions from the CAST paper. It is from the FAA, Federal Aviation 
academy it is one of the mandatory uh, group which uh, uh, qualifies or certifies the avionics or the airlines or aerospace uh, uh, software products so examples also we have studied in the other session and uh, uh, with the help of uh, control coupling the control flow analysis uh, we can see there are if there are any unreachable path or you know, reach a unreachable path partially or uh, completely if there are any parametric issues so that the flow is not proper and uh, we can have a visual inspection of the control flow also we do a software complexity is called a static uh, matrix uh, which we study in detail uh, in the later session later sessions mckay based software complexity lines of code nesting levels fan out and fan in then uh, we had gone through psychometric uh, mckay based complexity with uh, little details like uh, psychometric complexity calculation is done with help of edg minus nodes plus 2 and uh, if in case of any disconnected paths are there it will become a p depending on the number of path p is nothing but the path so complexity basically depending on the edges and the nodes so these are derived out of its diamonds or the processing blocks within the software program <coughs> so if the software complexity is greater than 10 means the complexity is high and uh, some of the industries they call for rework of the particular product simply because they don't have a complex program because the chances of errors are very high so basically the complexity mckay complexity number specifies the number of independent paths the program has and we also saw few examples of the cyclometric complexity it is very important to understand in the first case we have only one the complexity is one because we have two nodes and one edge in the second one we have four nodes and four edges so here the complexity is 2 the next one we have the complexity is 2 why because there are two paths and they are disconnected to the help of four nodes and there are two edges and in the last one we have five nodes and five sorry yeah five nodes and four edges meaning to say that it will become one the complexity is one you can see the independent execution path is only one from the first node to the last node and some more examples uh, recorded from on a tool such as understand c++ maybe you can go through that uh, this is from the ldra test bed here you can see the various paths being arrowed with the different nodes and the edges here the mckay base tan in the next one we have more complex program you can see there are a lot of uh, nodes have been connected with different edges the complexity here is 20 in the next one uh, we have uh, complexity as 46 very high so definitely this will call for a rework because the program can crash or the program may have a lot of errors and bugs which is difficult to fix so this kind of a mckay based complexity is better it avoided so with the help of tools it is easier to analyze the such a complexity so the hence the tools are getting used and uh, static analysis we will study we will continue today we know that uh, control coupling uh, we have the flow of the program controlled and the independent execution path or dependent execution path has been analyzed so in data coupling basically depending on the objects or the data that is being used entirely in the software program <coughs> so data will be data will work better around sequential code you know that when there is a complex code so we need to analyze the data in terms of its usage as well as the flow so ideally we will do a visual inspection of the data flow examples so we will uh, go through the definitions uh, with no intervening views that means we'll just try to understand the, so what is the definition 
attempted usage and attempted use of variable after it is killed that is especially this is in the emirates we process the how the data is being used how the data is being initialized and updated in the entire program and likewise attempted use of a variable after it is killed similarly after defined how the attempted use of the variable is being used in the entire emirates software program so that also will be analyzed in the data coupling or the data flow analysis okay uh coming to the next slide static analysis data coupling data flow analysis uh <coughs> so there are data which are undefined but reference to variables we have so we should remove from the code unnecessarily we have some data uh which are either uh, Uh, reference but undefined so there is no point in having that similarly we have variables defined but not used in the scope either should be documented in the code or should be uh, mentioned separately and variables redefined with no use in between should be documented if not close to or close it it uh, means to say that if you don't want to I have a redefinition of the variable without any usage. Then we should document it. Uh, here, documentation is you should comment it if it is going to be used for later stage, or if not used, you can close that uh, variable and uh, delete it. Then uh, you know the casting. This casting is very important term. They use it uh, in the email software with the different uh, types of variables being uh, interchanging the contents of that. So while doing that we use a type cast and all that with the help of embedded c and uh, while doing that there is a high chance that uh, we lose information in terms of some bits being uh, discarded and also there is a chance that there is a mismatch between the intended use and the actual use so if unavoidable use explicit cast that means better you explicitly type cast that particular variable so we have variable temperature as into variable red bar is all log wise suppose if this is a 16 bit integer and this one is a 32 bit integer then the best thing would be temp should be assigned with the help of thirty bit thirty bit type casting with the yeah red well so that so it will be aligned but we should be careful in such a way that the actual value with the help of thirty two bit we will not lose any information it could be vice versa also if it is 16 bit that is being assigned with the help of uh, the 32 bit uh, on the right hand side then uh, the chances are that the, the data outside the 16 bit we may lose so we need to be appropriately using it when we doing the casting such errors can be analyzed in static analysis and there could be a mismatch between the data what is being used and uh, what is being assigned so that also will be brought out while doing the static analysis of the data flow and the data coupling global variable analysis local local overrides global so we know that we use global variables which are used as a parameter shared object between various functions of the procedure and uh, sometimes so uh, the same names are used within the local function and uh, there is a confusion in terms of usage and and uh, while using that function that function uh, assumes that uh, the programmer whoever has written assumes that the local variable uh, 
will be updated or the global variable will be, be used or updated within the function, but the local gets the priority or the it overrides the global basically. So, such an analysis should be removed. The best way to have is avoid the redundant variables, we should have a meaningful variable names so that it is very clear either it could be a local or it could be a global. So these things we can definitely brought out while doing this static analysis saying that there is an anomaly between global versus local in terms of its usage and assignment or parameter passing. etc. So, all this can be brought out doing the static analysis, uh, typically um, some standards they say that you start the global variables with global variable 1 etc like that and local variable start with a variable. So, it will be very clear by seeing the variable itself we know that what type of a variable and where and all it is used, how it is getting used. Similarly, local variable getting identified with a small letter L. So it's a clear segregation of both of them, and there is no anomalies in terms of their usage and the uh, flow. So this is how the data coupling can be analyzed. Okay. The next one being uh, uh, static analysis. Basically, they use it in the unit testing. Uh, why? Because the unit testing will be done on the implementation of the code. Basically, that is why it is advisable to. Used during the unit testing uh, when we do the data flow basically. So, <coughs> so while uh, doing the analysis of the code, uh, certain things like project standards we need to establish for the code, like coding standards and uh, the nomen, uh, nomenclature of the uh, variables and uh, the procedure size or the function size or the calls and the breaks in the cases like how many cases it can be some of the DSPs will not allow more than four cases so in this in that case we need to be stringently following the rules of that particular processor or the development environment such that the program will not have any errors or it will not go for a crash. Similarly, we know that we should not have a go to's, we know that it is not a good practice to have because it will have a unintended behavior of the program and it is very difficult to return from that. So, these things are part of the logic standards that needs to be established and analyzed against that, so mostly this will be done in the unit testing and data flow and control flow can be equally done while doing the unit testing and other aspect could be remove unused items that means there are uncertain sorry unreachable code or the function within the code or the variables and the declared variables that are not used. So, all these parts can be identified either by the inspection or review or with the help of tools, all these can be avoided. So, such as unreachable code declared variables that are not used. So, this can be avoided in the implementation. So, such things will be brought out while doing the static analysis of the implemented program. And the other important aspect of the static analysis is address design architecture problems like uh, there are uh, 
the flow control flow and the data flow within the program which is having uh, a statements or the switching statements with the help of uh, pointers or the addresses that will be difficult to find out uh, while doing the execution so that will be a thorough inspection or the visual inspection of the control flow. So, we are clear about the architecture of the program or the program is designed and the various states this is definitely useful in uh, events states or state machines etc. So, in this case uh, we have to have a understanding of the entire program then with the help of a visual inspection apply the uh, standards or the architectural rules or the architecture uh, that we have understood in the program and with the help of control flow graph we will analyze the uh, design we will analyze the entire program. Similarly, we have anomalies in the procedures uh, the procedures are defined referenced and not used uh, such procedures should be should avoid and uh, the usage of the procedure in terms of parametric values also need to be analyzed while doing the uh, static analysis that is also an important aspect ok. So, coming to the next one uh, we know that control coupling control and data coupling are analyzed while doing the integration testing also it is not just uh, enough to have a control coupling and data coupling during the unit testing it is also important to have the control and static data coupling during the integration testing why it is important during integration testing is while doing the integration testing we will address the different modules and we know that we are going to integrate various models and the modules are with respect to software to software that means application level and it could be software to hardware such as device drivers with the application system versus application it could be such sort of a bottom up or the top down approach uh, integration uh, testing. Uh, while doing that it is uh, better to analyze the uh, the integrity details of the modules. So, that the control and data coupling can be analyzed ok. So, that is the highlight of that uh, control flow and data flow while doing the integration testing. The next one is uh, being a software software integration testing review of the control and data flow of the program you know that. Uh, basically the software software uh, integration as I said application level or the program level within the modules of the entire program will definitely bring out the control flow of the program and equally the data and the objects or the variables that are flowed on within the program. So, that is how the static analysis can be done <coughs> in the <coughs> entire embedded software program. So, that is how we will do the control coupling and data coupling in static analysis. So, now we will come to the tools part. So, what are the tools that are used and how they are being used and in what way it is useful uh, for static analysis ok. Static analysis tools, a static analysis tool is like an automatic reviewer uh, for your code that means whatever the human being does the machine the tool will take care of that basically on the intended embedded software program. So, it basically analyze the code or the reads through reads through the source code of course, without execution and looks for cases where it will behave in an undesirable manner for example, dereferencing a null pointer dividing a number by a variable by 0 or overflow of a memory buffer we know that embedded software program should definitely have a upper bound and lower bound of the memory memory and 
if any variables or procedure is exceeding that, so it will identify those anomalies. So the static analysis tool will work like an automatic reviewer of the code. Static analysis tools do not depend on sample input, definitely no input dynamic input or input actual input is required. They can infer the software's behavior based on just the source code because source code will have definition and the flow of the variables that are intended to be used within the procedure of the function. So with the help of that, so what the tool does is it will try to feed various values and it will try to analyze the flow of the particular parameters based on its definition and declaration. So that is what the meaning of this second bullet. They can infer the software's behavior based on just the source code. So when a bug is found, the tool reports its location to the reporter or the software engineer, whoever is running the tool, along with the information needed to diagnose the problem. That means it will just point out the problem where the issue is there in terms of. Uh, the static analysis uh, aspects of the uh, what we have seen earlier like control flow data flow issues which is automated which is done in the tool and it will report the location basically it will identify which location of what issue. So this is very important why because there are stringent uh, rule checker that are being used and uh, that needs to identify the various anomalies within the implemented program especially the rules like MISRA MISRA C it is a motor industry standard regulatory rules so MISRA standards suppose 2004 has about 120 plus rules are there those are rules which are stringent to be followed to be implemented in the program. Also there are mandatory rules and guidelines that also will be understood by the tool where the violation is there violation of the rules and the intended usage of the program and the data it will report as a error. So since so they do not <coughs> sorry since they do not depend on sample input. Static analysis tools can investigate program behavior in corner cases that are not anticipated by testers and human inspectors. Some of them, such as a very small sort of a like pragma or if it is a macro usage, which is very difficult to analyze or inspect visually. So, those things are definitely can be caught out with the help of the static analysis tools. Uh, because uh, for that uh, the programmer dependency or the yeah, sample input is not required by simply inferring the program flow or the data flow of the embedded software the tool will identify such issues which are uh, hiding from the human while uh, doing the inspection. Okay. While no tool can find all bugs, of course, modern static analysis tools generate valuable results with minimal false positives. That means it will definitely aid the tester or the testing team in terms of where could be the problem areas, where are the issues the likely that is going to happen while the program is going to go for a field or program is getting executed. So even for projects with millions of lines of code definitely the tools will give some sort of a hint or issues or it can report directly but wherever there is a problem which it cannot report directly or if there are errors or issues so because of one issue it could result in a runtime error suppose it identifies a variable as a variable improperly defined this is an issue this at least will give a issue suppose you say issue n this issue n is definitely a clue 
for the program that can have a bug while executing on the field or when there is a dynamic usage of the program it could be any issues like uh, memory performance speed timing etc anything it could be so at least uh, if it's not in uh, entirety it may support but <coughs> what it can do is it can uh, aid or help the tester in terms of uh, uh, results that can have a uh, some sort of a positiveness in terms of uh, errors or issues that can uh, be fixed to have a major uh, crackdown in the later stages of the program. So that is how it can be used, the tools can be used. Okay, so what are the tools that are available in the market or that are most likely to be used? In the embedded software industry, of course, there are hundreds of tools. Each one have been uh, used, or each ones are being evolved based on their usage and the feedback from the embedded industry. So there are uh, certain uh, few examples which I try to put here, which can be used directly or indirectly, partially, fully, depending on the type of embedded software systems. It could be a telecom, it could be a railway signaling systems, it could be a uh, automotive or aerospace, etc. Uh, one such tool is uh, understand for C++ or ADA uh, from Sky Tools. So basically, this is a good static analysis tool which will identify, which will identify uh, analysis, uh, static analysis aspects like Maccabre uh, complexity. Lines of code it will report the dead code, dead objects, initialization, variable uh, improper uh, usage, then the call tree you know all this by now. So, as a static analysis aspect, all this can be done with the help of understands for C which has got a lot of uh, uh, features. I will uh, try to go through a snapshot of the understand for features as a practical uh, understanding of the tool uh, in the next slide probably. Similarly, we have a tool like Polyspace, it has its own advantages and disadvantages, uh, they use it in the automotive industry. Similarly, we have Coverity for inspection, uh, reviews and uh, static analysis, we have a QA checker, QAC, Cantata, uh, then we have LDRA test bed. So some of these tools like LDRA or RTRT they can also be used for unit testing where we do the instrumentation you know that during white box testing we need to do the instrumentation of the code with the test tab and the test drivers. So meanwhile the same tool can be used for that uh, this also uh, can help in terms of static analysis, code inspection, uh, reviews etc. <coughs> of course as I said the MISRA tools for tool for guidelines and rule checker uh, we have uh, the IDs such as code compose studio multi uh, etc they have a inbuilt feature so which will uh, which can be triggered and used on the develop the code so which will report a error or the violation of the misra rule saying that such and such rules have been violated and uh, that the violations can be reported as a static analysis output. <coughs> that is how these tools can be used. Similarly, we have a Logiscope a Rule Checker. This is from Perilogic. This is also one of the important tools. Uh, the, across the industry, they use it. And we have the PC Lint. So that is also one of the static analysis tool, uh, basically it is more on uh, is the olden days tool basically Linux based the systems they had used and uh, for C program, C++ program 
is a inbuilt uh, along with the compiler or the compiler series uh, programs is available this is an open source uh, static analysis tool this can be used for uh, static analysis. So these are some of the static analysis tools so we will try to understand uh, uh, a snapshot of uh, static analysis uh, testing tool uh, here it is understand for C++ uh, I think I will uh, try to create a sample project and uh, explain the flow of understand uh, for C++ how it can be used in one of the practical session in the later part of the course probably in the end of the MA software testing course this is a sample report you can see this tool has a lot of features such as we can build the program build the project with the help of embedded C you can see the source code here like int main is there there is a blue letter which it understands from C perspective that the declarations and definitions as part of the implied C source it will highlight and the variable name it has highlighted at the black letter here so the definitions can be easily understood by the user in terms of analyzing the code and understanding the resource code and here you can see a invocation of a sample program which I have wrote there is a main there is a delay which is called by main and delay is calling the another program called nothing <coughs> so this is a call tree. Similarly, we can have a complexity in the call tree. Maybe one more slide I have to show you at what deep level we can use the understand for C tool. And another window we can have another type of report which shows the other side like the nothing is called by whom, it can be called by multiple people here. Uh, but here in this case only it is a one flow or the one sided one direct call is there from main delay and nothing. So on the left hand side you can see the snapshot of uh, how the particular function or the group of program uh, it can highlight. Uh, here it is defined in the main uh, it will list out uh, a global as functions how many functions are there there are three functions delay main and nothing and it will report for this particular main dot C a matrix in terms of what is the count line so what is the count line code you know that executable lines of code 75 is there and there are 49 lines having comments and there are inactive there are 0 that means if there are inactive lines it will report as so many number. So likewise we can have the report I will try to show you in one of the sessions how we can generate the report with the help of this tool and you can also download this tool for free or not for commercial use from www.skytools.com they will give a 15 days evaluation version where you can create a sample project sample embedded C or C++ project and analyze the same maybe the download part of that you can take care and maybe I can provide some exercises so that we can go through them and try to understand the tool so this is the snapshot of the understand for C++ <coughs> static testing tool. So there is one more tool we will go through <coughs> this is a check marks check uh, that is from check marks dot com you can see the reference here this also have a various uh, analysis uh, output in terms of a vulnerable code line so what is uh, having issue here highlight and uh, it will start the project files what are the files what are the header files here I think uh, it is taking uh, an example a snapshot of uh, uh, I think it is a 
database program. The right side, right hand side, you can see the flow of uh, different programs. Uh, it is called attack vector. How it is being ordered. Similarly, uh, results it will show in red if there is a found errors or issues, and there is a optimal mitigation point. That means how uh, different programs have been controlled and mitigated with this control flow. Likewise, we can use the static analysis for generating the static analysis report with the help of this check marks tool. In the next, uh, as I said in uh, my earlier slide, to understand for C++, here you can see a simple program having only more three programs of the functions which are being invoked. In the next one, you can see the complexity. It is not the flow or control flow complexity, you will be called to it basically. You know, it is, you may not be able to see completely, maybe when I explain the tool, you can understand uh, uh, the call tree in detail. Here you can see the main function calling uh, its ADA program. There are about uh, six to seven uh, main next level function. We can call it as a level one. Then each one of this program or the function will call the level two individual. Functions. There are each one can have four, five. Likewise, this is a level two. At the uh, next after the first invocation is done. Similarly, we have a level three. We have a level four. We have a level five, etc. So, and it also can report uh, in terms of uh, no issues with a green color and issues with. Uh, of course, we have a level six. So this the complexity. Here we can presumably say that as to level six. Of course, it depends on each function on its internal details, and it will highlight with different colors and different aspects of the control flow. So this is one of the good example of understand for C++ call tree. With the help of this. The user or tester can analyze how each program or the function have been architected, how the each function or the functionality or the individual procedures have been used or the called within the entire embedded systems. So this is very important aspect for static analysis. Okay, the next important aspect for the static analysis is W set. It's also called as worst case. Execution time analysis. So we know that timing is very important in memory systems, especially hard real time embedded systems. So we need to have a timing aspects clearly analyzed in the program so that we know that what it is going to take. Uh, the worst case uh, for a program, it could be any functionality, it could be entire program or it could be a device driver, whatever it is. So all these have to be analyzed for its time or the, uh, the timing that particular piece of software it takes. It takes from two aspects, best as well as worst. So both have to be analyzed. So very important aspects in embedded software testing. This needs to be analyzed statically. So worst case execution time analysis provides the worst possible execution time of the code before using it in the system. Before actually we use the system on the field or for dynamic testing. The W set or the worst case execution time analysis of a piece of code depends on both on the program flow, like we have a for loops, iterations, then we have additions such as if else statements, then it depends on the various function calls that are within the program. 
and of course the architectural factors like cache and pipelines of course embedded industry they use cache cache memory uh, you know that embedded software will have a cache which is a temporary storage which is uh, being used very frequently and uh, these factors can be understood while doing the double set or the worst case execution worst case execution time analysis and the pipelines pipelines is nothing but an important processor aspects such as fetch load store and execute so these are some of the stages that core core processor or the processor does for executing so definitely if you instruction cycle are involved those need to be analyzed in terms of how many instructions it requires a line of code or a group of lines of code or the entire program or the piece of function so very important to have worst case timing analysis in the in the software testing so we know that how much it is going to take for worst case execution of the particular software with the help of the timing analysis we do that and we will report as a failure if it is going beyond intended timing and it needs to be fixed by the development team in terms of optimizing the time or reworking on the code whatever it is. Okay, so the W set analysis was used to verify real time requirements to optimize the programs, to compare algorithms and to evaluate hardware. Definitely we need to have a comparison of the various models so that we know how much each model is going to take so that entirely we know that what is more complex, what is going to take more time, etc. And also we will know and analyze the programs which require optimization and uh, so and so hardware is behaving this way, it is taking more time suppose you have some 3 4 drivers I would say device drivers each one takes its own time like one takes 2 millisecond other one takes 5 millisecond other one takes 10 microsecond etc. So we know that overall that particular program if that is using a three device driver we will know how much it is going to take. So this 2 millisecond could be one read operation or write operation or access whatever it is. So all this can be evaluated with the help of the timing of that particular program. So this also is a measurement, measurement of the time one of the measurement is timing analysis tools used for emulators tools used are emulators time accurate emulators for the program so emulators will support in terms of the call sequence and the total time of the calls or the stack usage in terms of how much time it has taken or the call tree or the sequence tree etc. So all this can be done with the help of emulators as well as simulators. Then we have logic analyzers which can be hooked into the embedded software and with the help of logic analyzers timing analysis can be done and we use oscilloscopes to measure the various timing aspects you know that oscilloscope will help in doing the plotting. So we have something like this. And we can measure time like this or any ways in the oscilloscope where we have the time on the horizontal axis and we have the value on the vertical axis so that we know what is the value across the time it is going to take. And we do the analysis with the help of oscilloscope to probe any signals or the variables. 
of course we have the timer readings of the particular emits procedure or the uh, variable or the signals and of course so we have inserted programs specifically for measuring this into the software and we have the profiling it is wrongly spelled here it is nothing but the software profiling profiling is a very important aspects in the embedded software systems with the help of profiling we will do the analysis of the timing that that procedure or the intended program is going to take ok. So, that is about uh, worst case of application analysis you can see a example this is from uh, one of the web reference that I have used. So, here both aspects have been uh, put in this diagram which has a B set, B set and W set. So, B set is the best case uh, analysis, best case execution time and uh, W set you know that it is a worst case uh, execution. So, in between in the middle we you can see that there is a possible execution time and uh, beyond that there is a one safe uh, zone called best case execution estimates best case execution analysis. So, across the horizontal uh, line you can see the time and uh, the program can take from best to worst. So, we will do an analysis we will say this is the tighter one and we have a border actually where we define the, the best and the worst. So, within this mostly it is going to execute optimally if it is less than B set it is called as a safe uh, B set and estimates or analysis if it is beyond that uh, zone of this uh, execution time you can see in the middle uh, it is called as a worst case uh, estimate. So, like this we do a analysis of the best case uh, execution and the relationship we will draw. <laughs> so, the goal of uh, W set analysis is to generate a safe and tight uh, estimate of the worst case execution time of the program fragment or the program. So, a related program related problem is that uh, of finding the best case execution time of a program you can see in the program uh, example here figure uh, how the different uh, timing analysis have been <coughs> put together. So, this can uh, depict uh, the average execution time, the best execution time and the tightness safe estimates likewise we can have. So, Uh, analytically it is it may be difficult to arrive at average execution time uh, because uh, there are a uh, uh, lot of statistical uh, profiling of the input data real time data all are required it may be very difficult, but definitely we should be able to analyze the worst case and with the intuition and the uh, analysis of various worst case execution we will know what is the possible execution time and the best execution time. So, we for doing that the worst case estimate or the worst case execution analysis. So, the important steps that we need to take care is the program flow, I will start here, then we need to have a low level flow or analysis because individual low level analysis will matter in terms of high level program flow collectively and of course, we have a calculation of all this flow this we are very important steps in terms of worst case worst case execution 
timing analysis. So this is how the first case execution timing analysis is done. Um, there are, uh, as I said, logic analyzers, oscilloscope, emulators, simulators, any of the tools can be used for doing the first case execution analysis. Uh, you can see another snapshot of uh, WSET, uh, this is from uh, bounty.com, so there is a, uh, what, a, what uh, they do is uh, they will define a uh, boundedness of the program and uh, surrounding that they will define the various uh, aspects like uh, uh, source code being used from the compiler and linker. Uh, which will be applied within the bounty and uh, that compiler linker can use libraries or kernels. And uh, user assertions in terms of uh, for loops, values, call counts, all this will be analyzed in the bounty analysis. And uh, <coughs> the analysis is done with the help of decoding the instructions and the control flow, sub program calls, and loop bounds, first case path, all this will be done with the help of bounty analysis. The inputs are analyzed, and as a result, we have a flow graph, as a result, we have a call graph, as a result of this bounty analysis, we have first case bounds in terms of. Uh, the cycles, the various cycles that each program fragment or the programs will take. Like main, we'll have a cycles of 9,352 cycles. There is a program foo, which will take 121 cycles, and the count is 105. Solve is 9,007. Count is 303. Once is 7, Each program fragment will list out how many cycles. And with the help of that, we will do a static analysis of the uh, timing or the uh, timing analysis. The next one is a st static analysis in terms of stack analysis. It's also a very important aspect. In the next type of static analysis is a stack analysis. You know what is a stack? Stack memory has to be allocated statically by the programmer. That means the implementation code should have a stack memory definitely because we use interrupts or preemption of the various small functions by bigger functions or preemption of a bigger procedure by smaller functions definitely. The program state and the variable state all have to be saved and should be recalled. So that is the use of a stack. Definitely, embedded systems will have a stack memory, and the stack memory has to be allocated. How much it is going to take each embedded software fragment or the entire program? Understanding, uh, sorry, underestimating, underestimating the stack usage can lead to a serious runtime errors. So we need to have a definitely a safe. Uh, uh, bound of the stack memory and uh, the allocation is very important and we should, we should make sure that the implementation of the embedded systems will not go beyond the stack memory. So that is why there will be a hard requirement saying that uh, at least 50% uh, or they say 75% stack memory should have a reserve. That means uh, in worst case, it may exceed so that on the safer side, better we should uh, reserve 70 percent of the stack so that if the program spills beyond 25 percent, still it is safe because the embedded systems will not crash because there is no stack issue or stack error. Okay. So underestimating stack usage can be to serious runtime issues, program behavior can be unpredictable, 
when there is a stack issue and which is very difficult to find. Similarly, overestimating a stack issue is also we cannot have, we cannot have a 200 percent or 300 percent of stack issue buffer or allocation because we are wasting the memory. Stack analysis calculates the stack usage of the application. We know that the analysis results are valid for all inputs and each task execution. Stack analysis can directly analyze on binary executable exactly as they are executed in the common system. So stack will be same. And stack analysis is not only reduces the development effort but also helps prevent runtime errors due to stack overflow. So it is a very important aspect is that any time of the embedded software system or the program we should, we should make sure that <coughs> there is no stack overflow during the runtime. So this also will be analyzed during the stack analysis of the embedded software system in the static analysis. The analysis can also done on the map files generated during the build process. So we know that program will be compiled, linked and as a result we have a executable with map file basically map file will have the complete picture of the program which is going to be executed on the processor. So the picture will clearly tell the pointers on the memory like it will list out basically the stack segment memory program text and the data. So this needs to be analyzed and definitely this will have a stack memory usage and the upper boundary how much it can have, so that needs to be analyzed and we know with the help of map file what is the stack, so maybe as a practical example I will try to go through a sample memory file, the memory file will have name with a dot map, so this needs to be analyzed statically, so with the help of that we will know the memory aspects and the stack aspects of the embedded software program. So with this we will conclude today's session, we will continue the next session on the static analysis with the stack workflow and, and what are the guidelines that needs to be taken care for stack analysis in the next session.